good to see you guys again. This is Clarence from the Asian Tech Guy. And as you can tell, I have a new setup here to do some changes of events at my home. My, my setup is basically Rex Mac in the living room. I've upgraded to, it's a narrow desk, but it's longer. And I have some space right here for working on builds and, and reviews and stuff. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's, I know that's a mini pack board. Today, I'm actually a bit curious because the saying always goes, get a trusty power supply because that can last you for years and you want to protect the rest of the system. But uh, I just wondered because I stumbled upon some real cheap fully modular power supplies from Taobao Marketplace in China. So today, right here, right now, I want to see whether it's worth it, it's worth buying if you really want modular cables and whether does it work as advertised. This guy right here, it's the Eve Sky Tianjin 600 Watt. It's a 600 Watt unit. There's no 80 plus certification on this guy, but it's rated as, at least on the website, 85% efficiency. So I will pack that. That could be kind of equivalent to A plus bronze. We're going to unbox this guy, see how it fares in gaming usage, and see what the power draw is on this guy. And I'm going to compare this guy not to 80 plus bronze unit, but from one of the power supply or manufacturers that I really trust, it's FSP. Uh, what I know is that they are the, they are the OEM manufacturers for Seasonic power supplies and they are real legit and I really like them. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to benchmark this guy against a 600 watt 80 plus unit from FSP. That's of course non-modular but we're just testing the performance so it doesn't really matter. Here goes! This is not a very heavy power supply, so sometimes weight is an indication of quality. But as always, the proof is in the pudding. Let's open this up with the box cutter. Alright, real simple box. Of course, with a China power supply plug, which I can't use here. Right, the model cables just bundled up like that. No sleeve or case for this. It comes in a very cheap uh, kind of bubble wrap. All the bubbles have, have all disappeared for some reason. All right, and this is what we're looking for. I believe it's there's a 120 mm fan in there. All right, if Sky Tianjin 600 watt, two for PCIe, or rather three for CPU slash PCIe. One for ID SATA, 24 pin uh, motherboard power, of course, and then two more for ID SATA. So, just a very quick one on what is 85% efficiency. In this case, since this is a 600 watt unit, so in order to supply 600 watt, you have to draw 705 watts from wall. The better the efficiency rating on the power supply, basically, in order to draw the same up, supply the same amount of voltage to a PC, you will draw less of power. That means better power efficiency and lower electricity costs, but of course it comes at a higher price point. That you got to keep in mind for the budget user. I would say for most budget users, just sticking to 80 plus bronze is a good place to begin with because the difference between bronze and the gold units, the differential in the price is a huge jump. You might save in the long run, but if you don't use a PC that often or that hardcore of a gamer, I don't think it makes much of a difference. It's better if you can stick to 80 plus bronze. A lot of manufacturers have a local manufacturers at least or suppliers. Distributors, they will give about three to five years local warranty, even for the 80 plus bronze units. Uh, you are probably good to go there. You can save your money. So this is the power supply unit. I'm gonna pit it against. This is the FSP Hyper K600 watt. This is 80 plus white power supply. So it's about 80% efficiency, at least from what I recall. And what's good about this unit, although it's non-modular, is that it's all black cables. No catch up master there, of course. And I believe the new uh, or rather newer models of this. Now it's now the HV Pro, if I recall correctly. Yep. Now it's remodeled as the HV Pro 650 watt. I, I believe this guy is also 80 plus. It says 85% efficiency rating. You know, 85% efficiency means 80 plus bronze, but it just has a simple A plus logo right there. But I'm sure it works real fine. In terms of looks, they look pretty much identical here. You won't really see them when you put it in your chassis. Both of them have this 120 millimeters fan. In terms of size, stack it up against, uh, against each other. See? Yep. 
pretty much they're identical in size, pretty standard sizing. Let me get the measurements real quick. Right, so that's 15 centimeters in width, 14 cm in length, and the height wise, it's good, nice cm. This will fit in most ATX or mid tower chassis, no problem. It's not like those big, huge, beefy ones, but of course, you're not gonna get that. <laughs> right, first off, to the cables. It's all slick black, but the cables. Uh, you know, they are flexible and can be well routed to where you want to route in your cases, of course. I would say like, it feels cheap. Like connectors here, there's slack like flex to it when you press on it. So it's not very solid, but it should be decent. You couldn't be routing these guys a lot of times. Just do it once or twice and you're good. So in terms of your connectors, you have the run of your Mule 24 pin ATX. That's your 8 pin CPU connector right there. You have some SATA connectors. You have your Molex as well. Then one thing to note, uh, in terms of your PCIe connectors, there's only one of them, it's pigtail. So you don't have two dedicated cables to go to your graphics card. And of course, a 600 watt unit is not going to support a 3070 or 3080 and above. Very likely, or rather I mean 3080, 3070 can still do. But you don't have enough connectors for 3080. 3080 is usually, if not wrong, they need three of these eight pin our PCIe power connectors, but we should be plenty fine here with this. Right, if you compare it to the Hyper-K by FSP, they all stick black as well, but the connectors feel way more solid. I trust this way more. What you lose here is that you don't have the modularity, because these cables are not modular. So with this like spaghetti bunch of cables right here, if you don't need them, you still are forced to live with them, and you've got to stuff it somewhere in a case, which makes cable management just that tad bit harder. So now we're gonna go for the weigh-in because the other unit is now modular. We've got to plug in all the cables to account for the weight of the cables as well for sure. PCIe goes in, 24 pin ATX. Next up will be the CPU cables. I'm a bit surprised with this guy. So they actually come with two 8 pin CPU cables, which you know for some motherboards they need this, but it's mainly for overclocking. So I don't think you want to overclock with this guy right here. Next up, you have a SATA. Lastly, another one of your SATA Molex connectors. Alright, now I see where we're getting here. We still have a spare PCIe you know, connector right here, a port right here, and two more SATA. So you can, I believe you can get these cables and plug them in if you need more juice. That works, seems promising. Then look at the sticker right here. Apparently it seems to have some kind of warranty, 12 months, but I bought this from China. So it's gonna be, I don't think it's worth it, you know, shipping to China and back. So this unit, I forgot to say that it's, it costs 50 Singapore dollars. So for a fully modern supply, that's uh, real cheap. Yeah, if it works. All right, now for the weigh-in. First up, the Hyper-K 600 watt. Some of the cables will be hanging out, but let's screw it. All right, this guy is 1021 gram. And now our Eve Sky 600 watt mod, fully modular unit, 1007 gram. That's pretty much identical. Off to a good start there. A lot of times weight is an indication of quality because it means that you know the capacitors, the stuff used in the match function process is solid and not those cheap stuff. So I'm really glad that the weight is kind of similar right there. Introducing our test bench. Yeah, I got a new test bench as well. This guy is built on the AM4 platform. This is a B450 steel ledger motherboard. So powering the system. Power supply is a Thermaltake Smart SE 630M. It's 87% efficiency on this guy right there. No 80 plus rating as well. And of course, we have this best price to performance from last generation Ryzen CPU, the Ryzen 5 3600. So that's cooled by the Snowman Dear Dighty ARGB CPU cooler. Hold on, my boy. As I said, this is air cooled by the ARGB cooler. It's a Snowman Dear Dighty. It says deer because there's this deer design back plate right there, which has a cool uh, rainbow effect running through it. It's powered by SATA. And this guy also has a beefy 1660Ti uh, by Asus Tough Gaming, a 3 fan variant, which I really like. Look at this, it's, it's kind of chunky. And for SSD, we have a 500 gigabyte Samsung PM851. It's an M.2 SATA SSD, but it should be plenty good for usage right here. For gaming, it doesn't really matter that much. And we have, sadly, this has no RGB, but I'm not sure why. This motherboard somehow doesn't support 3600MHz RAM that well. 
those are the only guys I have that have RGB in them, the memory kits. So I've defaulted to using these two G Skill snapbacks. They're running at 3200 megahertz and CL16. So no, no surprises what we're going to test this guy on. It's Cyberpunk 2077. I just bought this specifically for this round of testing. And of course, I'm going to play through this game. So if you can see right here, I'm using a 3440 by 1440p monitor here by Xiaomi. But of course, this game been what it is. It's really demanding, so I can't play at that resolution. I'm going to play at 2560 by 1440. I've already tested this system and I can get close to 60 FPS, which is pretty much what you're going to gun for, uh, for Cyberpunk 2077. Don't need to go over the top there. I mean, I can get a high frame rate at 1080p, but I feel like the better, you know, quality gameplay in terms of uh, graphical fidelity, basically eye candy. I will take the trade off and play close to 60 FPS at 440p, right? So first up, what we're going to do is that we're going to play Cyberpunk for 30 minutes on each of the power supplies. So we're going to monitor stuff using this guy right here. There's a power supply meter that I can monitor the mean, max and average power draw in terms of voltage. So we can see what kind of numbers we're getting. And of course, for running the game, what we're looking for is that we don't want to have any weird power outages, which will indicate that there's something wrong with the power supply. We don't want to get an interrupted gaming experience. So first up, we're going to plug in, of course, our new guy right here, the if sky 600 watt. Let's go. Now we get all the connectors in. Plug in the power. All right, we have successfully booted into Windows. So it's time to get 30 minutes of Cyberpunk 2077 going. We're drawing 206 from the wall. I'm going to put the overlays on. Right in the menu, our GPU is drawing about 85 watts. And CPU is about 60, which is about right for the recommended TDP for this 3600. To be honest, I haven't really played this game, guys. It looks real cool. The reflections, the sun rays, it's unlike anything that I've played before. I've not played many games in this recent decade for some reason. I'm still looking forward to Diablo 2 Resurrection. Okay, so that's a, this is really a refreshing experience for me. So we're currently drawing around 226 watts from the war in terms of overall stats. We've got a low of 3.8 watts. Uh, this doesn't really matter. A high of 251.5 So, so far while gaming, I didn't notice any weird shutdowns So that's really a present surprise And it's indicative like this power supply is well equipped Of course, we wouldn't know unless we visit long enough But on initial impression, it seems to work just fine Now let's move on to our FSP Trusty 80 plus unit Alright, now that we've done testing with that if sky 600 watt fully modular unit it's time to swap in our trusty FSP Hyperkey 600 watt 80 plus unit. Here goes. Mentioned something about a surprise yesterday. Am I remembering right or just had a brain fart? Probably both. Alright, so now let's listen to how loud this guy is. And uh, some kind of gaming load. I suspect it'll be just as sudden for sure, if not better, than the if Sky power supply unit. No, because these are 600 watt units. I think they are not even drawing close to anywhere near their max power capabilities. So, right, let's hear that as sudden as can be so right now we've been gaming for about 30 minutes so we're currently enjoying at about 244.5 and a high of 249.2 that seems pretty normal we're gonna pull up the numbers and see how the trusty fsp hyper k 600 watt unit against that if sky this guy right here 600 watt fully model unit basically in a nutshell these guys run pretty quiet i understand that you know they only ram real loud and get them to their max capacities. So guys always get a power supply that is a bit more rated than what a graphics card need. In that way, if you don't run it to the max capacity, rather uh, max power output, they don't need ram up as much to you know get sufficient cooling. 
So that will make for a quieter system. Alright, so now here comes my final roundup. Should you buy this guy, the Eve Sky 600 watt fully model unit, or should you stick to your trusty and well known brand names, even though they may be non modular if you're on budget? Well, uh, first off, using these two units, uh, the, I didn't experience any weird shutdowns uh, on high gaming loads, at least for the hardware specs that I can push. I mean, uh, that's the best I can have for my test bench for now. My main rig has a 2070 Super, but I just, just want to keep it there. And uh, of course, when these two power supply units are operational, I didn't notice any weird smells. I meant weird smells. <laughs> it's real comforting because if there's a weird smell, if there's a weird smell, I keep pronouncing smell as smell, which is <laughs> kind of weird there. So anyway, I want to say that if there's any weird smells, it's ind indicative that something is really wrong. You know, after some use, it may overheat and uh, things burn up. So you really don't want to have any weird smells while using it. In terms of max usage or the max voltage under similar gaming loads, uh, let's start off with the FSP first. The FSP unit is giving us a high of 249.2 whereas the if Sky 600 watt fully modular unit is giving us 251.1 That's only a marginal difference of 0.5% So that's virtually identical right there It's within the margin error If it all comes down to it, that's how well you trust this unit To me, I'd rather spend a bit more and uh, perhaps live with a non-modular unit But of course, if you're living in the ITX case or your case is pretty compact you may want to go for this guy right here. Personally, I'll go for more well-known brands. They also have come with warranties for about three to five years, rather than one year this guy here from China. If you want to have it replaced, you got to send it back to China, which I guess you couldn't want to do it. The shipping cost alone isn't that all worth it, uh, but it all depends. If you're on a budget, you really want fully modern cables, you can go for this guy. Otherwise, I have some suggestions right here. My first recommendation, if you're on a budget, it's the newer version of the FSP power supply unit. It's called the FSP HV Pro. It comes in a 550 watt and 650 watt variants. For the 550 watt, it goes for 60 bucks now, and for the 650 watt, it's going for 68 dollars and 75 cents in Shopee. This guy comes with a three years local warranty, which is pretty decent. So if you really like, like to go for a modular route, I mean, I know this is not fully modular, but it's good enough. It's a similar modular unit by Superflower. It's a real trusty brand as well in the region. The thing is that with uh, semi model power supplies, basically the 24 pin cables, the CPU cables are fixed, but pretty much you definitely need those. And the rest, you can plug it in as and when you need, like PCIe power, SATA and Molex. It's as good as fully modular in my books. So this unit is a uh, 80 plus Go. It's a super flower 650 watt Legion GX Pro. So this guy actually has five years local warranty. So anything wrong with it, just bring in for RMA. It's all good. Right, so these two are my personal recommendations. I'm sure there's more, but these are brands that I really like and uh, the prices are really reasonable. So I come to the end of the video. Feel free to like my video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And feel free to drop a comment down below if you have any questions or you want me to try something. Until next time, this is Clarence from Asian Tech Guy, signing out.